All right, uh, let's now take a look at how investors are weighing these vaccine developments. Uh, David Bonson of the Bonson Group, CIO, uh, joining us now. Um, hey, David, when we had uh, er, last Monday, it was all about buying small caps, selling tech, for example, and you had a big jump in yields. Um, the reaction today muted, in fact, kind of disappearing. You're not seeing any real move in yields. You're seeing the Nasdaq actually now underperforming, but still up on the day. What are we learning about the price action today? Well, I think last Monday, though, was more than just the small cap action. There was a big rotation into energy and the financials, and I do think you're seeing that continuing today. I think that it is obviously uh, catalytic from the vaccine news last week and this week, but I also think it's inevitable, and it has been inevitable, but boy, has it taken some patience to get here. David, do I just ignore what is happening on the ground right now? Do I just ignore the climbing case counts? Look through it, invest for next year. Yeah, you do. And the reason why is we've already been through this lesson. The case count is irrelevant to markets. We found out what we needed to know months ago, which is that there is a particularly vulnerable class of people for COVID-19 in our country, and we have the ability to better protect them. We have more than doubled the discharge rate getting out of hospitals because of therapeutic improvements and the mortality rate, not only for cases, overall infections, but even for severe hospitalizations has collapsed. So markets are able to look through that and see that though the headline number around higher testing produces higher positive cases, the fact of the matter is we're able to safely reopen and in fact have to do so. But David, doesn't what we do now uh, affect how we come out of this? For example, we don't have the stimulus here in the U.S. We're going to have programs from the Fed as well as D.C. kind of rolling off at the end of the year, even though we can look at that as quote unquote short term because we have a vaccine. It's going to dictate the level with which we're looking at growth and earnings potential in 2021 and 2022 versus, say, Europe. Um, isn't that where it matters? Well, let me offer a different perspective on that. When you say we don't have the stimulus here, we don't have a fourth stimulus, but we haven't spent all the money from the third stimulus yet. Now, we need a more targeted package. I agree that there would need to be additional. And in fact, the market is well aware that there's going to be. The questions are just if it's going to be in the lame duck session or into Q1 and what the size and scope of it will be. But the fact of the matter is the stimulative effects of CARES Act are nowhere near gone, let alone the trillions of dollars of monetary stimulus. There are still PPP benefits throughout the society, will continue to be so. That's the lowest hanging fruit for additional stimulus is giving more PPP support to those businesses that were doubly impacted by the lockdowns. David, can I just come back to this kind of tension that is in the market right now between the here and now and the, the huge numbers of people that are suffering from COVID and the post-COVID world generated by the Moderna vaccines and all the other vaccines we're going to be getting? Is the rotation a straight line? Are we going to see quite a lot of turbulence between now and then? And how do you pick your entry point? How do you, how do you position yourself during this period? No, that's a really great question, and I do not believe it will be a straight line. I think that the sort of rotation, what is usually just sort of referred to as a growth into value rotation, but there's a lot more nuance around it now, sector-specific and even subsector, but it won't happen in a straight line. My argument is it began in September. And yet there's certainly been big Nasdaq rallies and, and FANG and big tech rallies along the way. But this is a rotation that is not just going to be driven by vaccine and kind of post-COVID economic realities. It's a, it's a rotation that was long overdue anyways. Growth got another kick up because of stay-at-home factors around COVID. So it's sort of a perfect storm for that growth value relationship. That unwinding and mean reversion is a market inevitability throughout history. I think we're in that moment, but I, I do not think it's going to be a straight line. I think there will be turbulence. And to your question about picking the entry point, my very earnest advice is that people not try to pick a perfect entry point because they won't be able to. No one will. That's my job is to tell people that they will not pick a perfect entry point. So they have to kind of nibble in, average into those right spots in a properly diversified portfolio. So it's not 100 percent rotation all the time. And I also wonder, though, how long-term is the rotation going to be? For example, City looks at next year yields capped at one and a quarter percent for the 10-year. If it's capped, I wonder, does that cap the rotation? 
Well, I don't see this as only connected to the level of yields. I do think the steepness of the curve matters. I don't happen to agree with Citi that we're even going to get to one and a quarter on the 10-year, but that has more to do with Fed manipulation than it does economic strength. I think the economy will be plenty strong enough to support a one and a quarter 10-year, but the Fed is not going to let the 10-year and 30-year with deficits this high get there. I think they'll end up using yield curve control to put down the longer end of the curve. But ultimately, I think that the issue about rotation being long-term, short-term is that it's sort of a permanent reality, and yet we just got so out of whack in terms of the relationship of certain sectors to one another that there has to be a mean reversion. It will be very market disruptive, I think mostly positive, because as you know, we're dividend growth investors, but then other sectors will have their day, but there will be new stimuli and there will be new catalysts that affect that future rotation. David, we're going to leave it there. Thanks for the input today. Greatly appreciate it. David Barnson of the Barnson Group.